back to the vlog. I'm Daniel and I'm in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And today I'm over in the Dachau area of District 1, like the north part of District 1. Um, it's kind of a cool area. I like to stay and I'm just going to give you a tour of uh, one of these little neighborhoods. Uh, fortunately, which is actually pretty cool, is that I'm staying right next to uh, Bourdain's Saigon Lunch Lady. I'm actually kind of lost here, but <laughs> so I'm gonna go have the uh, lunch lady for lunch. Get a nice bowl of soup. And yeah, she's actually still open too, which is awesome. So a, a lot of the places that I used to go to in uh, Ho Chi Minh City are actually closed now. So it's a bit of a shame, but try to make the best of it. The air has been absolutely fantastic since I've been here, but today it seems to have gone a little south. I'm just going to roam through some of these alleyways to get to the lunch lady. Yeah, in, in Saigon, um, life really does happen in the alleyways here. It's all like the interesting local tidbits, you know? Everyone's just chilling and stuff. If you're looking to come here on um, like vacations and I uh, check out the tourist sites a little earlier like the post office and Notre Dame and it's basically empty so have at it <laughs> but for me this trip is definitely about food 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 which is why I chose to stay in district 1 versus like Tao Dien, which most of the expats are over there but yeah so here we are <laughs> the lunch lady <laughs> I think right now it's about 10.30, which is her official opening time. <laughs> Sit into these like tiny, tiny little chairs that I barely fit into. <laughs> This is a cool experience. Total street food status. You got like chickens for whatever reason. <laughs> one right here. <laughs> you just basically sit down and see what the soup of the day is. Uh, I think it's bun mang. I'm not sure. So. Yeah, it looks like bun mum, which is like a fermented fish, a fermented fish soup. So it's like super punchy. Um, I guess if you can imagine like fish sauce, but like in soup form. Not as refined, you know, and then a lot of like meat chunks and shrimp and all sorts of good stuff. It's actually one of my more preferred things to eat when I'm in Saigon. Um, so what's interesting is that like there's a local bowl size which is 40,000, the 40,000 dong. Um, but it seems like for most foreigners, that um, she'll just give you like a bigger portion, which is sixty thousand, um, which is still like under three dollars. So still a really, really good deal, and it'll fill fill you up too. If you eat the small bowl, um, I always end up ordering two. So, <laughs> if you guys recall, I got my uh, chopsticks when I was in Bangkok. So, yeah. 
I always feel weird about using like the uh, street side stuff. <laughs> Holy smokes, look at that action. <laughs> this looks crazy. So we have... Yeah, this is definitely Bun Mom. So you have the squid, the eggplant, and the okra is a good sign. Come on. I like how they boil up the veggies real quick. And then the pork belly, which is one of my favorite things. <laughs> Nice shrimp, and pork belly, eggplant, okra, chives, good stuff. Everything in Vietnam is just served with like an atrocious amount of veggies. It's like a salad. Give it a wipe. Sour and it's pretty good. Another sauce stuff, but I don't know what to do. <laughs> mm. Yeah, this is a pretty typical morning for me. Mid mid morning, I'll go out, come here. Or... There's a pho place right up the street here. I mean, like not right up the street, like right next door. That's really good too. So I'll hit that up some sometimes, and then get a coffee. There was an auntie filling up the sauce here, so I asked her what to do with it, and she poured me a little, a little bit of it, and said to uh, kind of dip the protein kind of thing. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like a sweet spicy dipping sauce. So, makes sense. <laughs> When I was here in 2020, this place was packed with like half foreigners, but now it's mostly local, which is always a good sign. So, she's still around, cooking for locals. It didn't become some super touristy hotspot, you know, and went downhill or anything like that, so. But it's still as good as I had it a few years ago, too.
freaking fantastic. <laughs> Not bad for like two dollars and sixty-five cents. <laughs> it's a pretty chill area too. So, like, what kind of defines Dachau or like the northern part of Dachau is like the riverfront. So that's right back here. I'll walk by it in a sec. So there's a lot of cool cafes and restaurants that set up in front of it. And uh, the lunch lady here has a nice big tree that she's been under for quite some time. So. The place just has a cool vibe, it's very chill, surprisingly, for um, Ho Chi Minh City, which is always kind of like crazy and bustling, right? So, that's why I prefer Dachau. And it's a nice location. It's like kind of close to Landmark, and it's also a closer, it's one of the closest parts to um, Taodian or District 2 from District 1, so you're, you're kind of placed in the middle, right? Because Sometimes when you stay in District 2, it's just, you're just kind of out there. There's not a lot of Vietnamese food that's worth trying, you know. Um, so if you're here for food, I would say Dachau is the place to go because you're close to all the District 1 haunts. And, you know, it's just better centralized, even though it's a little off-center, right? So that would be my recommendation. So this time it's a short trip because they only have a 30-day e-visa. So usually I stay for a couple months, but this time it's a little short. I haven't been back for years and years, so I want to be eating some street food action like this. <laughs> so if you like this kind of stuff, I, I would say Dachau is a good place to start. A lot of good food here. All right, I'm in full body sweat right now. <laughs> ready for some coffee. Uh -oh. I only have a 500,000. waiting to pay. <laughs> Seems pretty cool. She's like setting up for the lunch rush. My book buy on cooking quite. Oh no, I'm okay. <laughs> Just okay. <laughs> I guess she has a cookbook as well if you want to purchase it. I might do it on the way out. Because it's kind of neat to learn how to make all this stuff. But there she is right there. <laughs> it's a pretty cool setup. Now I'm gonna walk towards the um, the river, I guess. It's like a small river, but <laughs> and that's that flow place that I really, really like. <laughs> I say it's probably like one of my favorite post spots. It's pretty cool because it's in front of the river. <laughs> it just has really cool vibes. Everyone's just chilling out. Not too much traffic. You can take a walk on there if you want. Look at that beast. <laughs> it's super cool. So there's this other little coffee joint I've hit up. So it's called Corner Cafe. It's pretty nice. Can get a nice iced coffee for 88 cents.
little bit later in the afternoon. Go home and chilled out a bit. I had to do a wardrobe change because I was just covered in sweat. But now the uh, it's a little later in the afternoon. Got some cloud cover. So it's not absolutely horrible. And uh, getting a little hungry. So I'm gonna head over to that pho place that I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna get me some uh, noodle soup action and then uh, I think I'll head over to I show you guys like an international grocery store. I usually go there buy some drinks and fruit and coconut water and whatnot. But yeah. <laughs> It's really cool walking along the uh, the canal, actually, is the word I was looking for. <laughs> Earlier I was calling it a river, but it's more like a canal. So you got the canal on that side and then um, over on this side is just like a bunch of restaurants and stuff and it just kind of keeps going usually at night everyone's just chilling here relaxing yeah, it's just a quick walk to the faux places right there let me see if they'll understand my broken Vietnamese for when I try to order. <laughs> I just pop a squat right here. <laughs> River view or canal view. Oh, yeah, the light's reflecting off the table here. It's gonna be a little bright. <laughs> I don't know. I don't speak Vietnamese, so I just like sit here until someone helps me. <laughs> Such is my life in Vietnam. Alright, so the ladies finally helped me. <laughs> so I ordered Thai Nam Wabi. Pronouncing it like crap I'm sure. But it's like the, the rare steak brisket or flank. It's like the slow cooked meat and then uh, meatballs. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. This place has been here for a long time. Ever since I first started coming to Saigon which is which is like saying a lot because a lot of the pho places that I've come to enjoy or just a lot of the restaurants are they just cycle through so fast so unless you're really really particularly good and priced well then it'll probably like not work out <laughs> but I think this place is pretty decent I mean it's uh, 65,000 for a bowl so under three bucks <laughs> It's a good looking bowl. Wait for my veggies. <laughs> but yeah, we get to have some food right in front of the canal here. Yeah, you can see that steak is rare. <laughs> Put it in the hot soup. Come on. Slice of paradise. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, you, you come here anytime in the morning or around lunch, I mean, it's packed. And rightfully slow. And rightfully so, because it's super freaking good. Give you a nice basket of veg. What's pretty cool is, I mean, you have this vegetable, like razor coriander, and then Thai basil in the US. So that's like not anything new, but here they have this thing. I think it's called rice patty herb. I'm not really sure, but it adds good flavor to the meat, actually. I think it kind of has like, it's like tarragon sort of flavor profile. Yeah. Just making a salad over here. <laughs> Yeah, so this like rice patty herb is something I really, really like in my beef pho in Vietnam. It's quite, it's quite awesome. Usually they give you a couple sprigs and generally at the decent pho places in Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon, you'll, you'll hear me call it both, but um, they always give you like massive amounts of veggies, which is like Freaking awesome. <laughs> Hit it with some of that basil. You know, I, I enjoy the interactive part of Vietnamese food, you know, like kind of making your own style here. And a lot of Asian food is like that. But some people don't love it. <laughs> Hit it with the lime. We just do the brown sauce and yeah. I don't actually put it in the soup which I don't recommend in Vietnam because it's just gonna like kill the flavor of the broth which is like profound <laughs> when you compare it to stuff you have like outside of Vietnam I mean it's like a different dish almost and they give you a ton of veg and it's just I don't know you can probably see how excited I am it just looks really nice Look at how much goodness is in here. Not like some ridiculously massive bowl, you know. I mean, it's a decent size. It's probably like a small in the US. <laughs> it's actually the first time I've got the bobbin, which is like a meatball from this place. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's got like a whole black peppercorn in there. What a good flavor. I, I just really like this place. <laughs> it's one of my favorites that still remain, actually. <laughs> oh, that broth is great. Yeah, so in the Thailand series, I was wearing a mask everywhere because that was the ordinance, but I don't think that's the ordinance here anymore because a lot of the locals aren't wearing masks like in the malls or just walking around so just gonna kind of mimic that and when you take like a grab car they aren't making you wear a mask or anything um, so far though only when you go inside like a store like in a shopping mall like if you go inside Uniqlo then, you know, there, there's a guard there that wants to put, put on a mask, which is fine, so I just carry it <laughs> on my arm right here. In those situations. Alright, enough talk. <laughs> man <laughs> but the beef is just like everything I don't know this is like it's just hard to replicate in the US and I've found certain places in Little Saigon and Orange County kind of where I grew up that will get close but they're like $18 it's insane so 
Yeah, I mean, this is like legit bone broth. I mean, you feel fantastic when you drink it. And I'm sure it's got a lot of electrolytes in it because I'm just constantly sweating here. Mm. I killed the whole bowl. <laughs> it's fantastic. But, yet again, covered in sweat, so. <laughs> waiting for my change. <laughs> Woo! There it is, ladies and gents. The goat of pho. <laughs> my God, it's, I mean, it's rainy season and the sky's looking a little dark and the humidity is just out of control right now. Super warm. So I'm just covered in sweat again, so. I usually shower like three times a day, four times a day. <laughs> so cool. Take a little shortcut through the uh, back streets here. And we're gonna hit the uh, grocery store. They got a bunch of little street food stalls here. In between, in a little alleyway. <laughs> oh. These look super hardcore though, so I don't know if they're for me. <laughs> you also find this a lot, C-O-M, or come, 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 which is like rice and uh, like grilled pork dish kind of. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like more precisely a broken rice. So the grains are like in little pieces before they're actually uh, cooked. Uh, I, I think that's a Saigon thing as well, like very specifically to here. And the kum tum dish is like super popular, especially at night, you know? <laughs> but yeah, so actually right across the way here is the Saigon Zoo. <laughs> So I actually live close to the lunch lady and the zoo. Yeah, there's just so much development going on. Like this place wasn't even here last time I was here. And then there's this like giant mall complex or something going on and they're also building a new building so. <laughs> it's just never a boring time coming to Ho Chi Minh City it's always changing it's always fast-paced food's always great a lot of little street vendors I generally don't go for those kind of vent vendors. Um, I'll eat at the lunch lady, but aside from that, I generally stay away from the street food, especially if there's no running water, because that's that's when things can kind of go go wrong. But yeah, <laughs> that's just my advice. And I don't want to see a bunch of comments about how I suck and I'm not having street food because I've eaten my fair share over the last eight years. <laughs> There's the zoo. 
this is this new i don't even know what it is it's like nova land just like kind of looks like a strip mall out of the u.s or something <laughs> it's kind of neat <laughs> And then this place is new as well. Crystal Jade Palace. It's a dim sum restaurant. Maybe I'll give it a shot, but... I mean, it's just crazy that this building didn't even exist two years ago when I was here. There's just so much change so fast. All the time. So the grocery store is just on the corner here. Kind of give you guys an idea. I think he's surveying or something. <laughs> yeah, this is very typical Dachau. Most of District 1 is kind of like this too. But this street right here, it just kind of keeps going. It just has a lot of food and um, it was a pretty popular street with expats and digital nomads for a while. Yeah, it's called Wen Ti Men Kai. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, so the market's right here. Nauman market? I don't know. There's like a there's like a chain of um, there's a couple different international markets. view the hall at home <laughs> but um, it's got some coconut water and some soda water and then I like the splurge on this like dark chocolate that they have I mean it's like it's not cheap considering it, it, it costs more than lunch you know but it's really nice I also got some jackfruit too because like that's my thing. I think the jackfruit in Vietnam is spectacular and yeah. Kinda need the coconut water for hydration and I just end up feeling really tired. I don't know if that's real or not, but every time I just drink water I always feel blah. Maybe because I'm just constantly sweating. Yeah. I didn't bring any like electrolyte powder with me this time. So next time for sure, or I'll just try to order it in, but yeah. Well, yeah, this is very typical Dachau, you know, nice zoo. It's got pretty chill vibes. You usually gotta be careful of your, uh, of your phone or camera in Ho Chi Minh City outside, so. I just have like a death grip on this GoPro right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm not taking out the full camera because I don't want to deal with that. So the GoPro is super compact. Allows me to kind of like zip in and out of places. And yeah, so bear with me on that. Ladies and 
gentlemen. Very typical kind of a day in Dachau. So, thanks for joining. I think I do a little, if you guys want to see the uh, actual item. Jackfruit, boom. It smells amazing. This is kind of interesting. It's like Aquafina soda water. I've only seen this in Vietnam, but it's not bad. I, I, I like the, the mouth feel a little better than Schweppes. And here is like this next level I see it. It's the greatest chocolate ever. <laughs> it's like a, this one's 85%, but they have like all sorts of, you know, your standard milk chocolate all the way up to really, really dark and like everything in between, which is cool. 60, 70, 80, whatever. Um, it says product of Vietnam. And yeah, so the coca beans are actually from Vietnam, so. You should definitely check out the dark chocolate in addition to coffee because of course coffee is huge but it, yeah where you grow good coffee beans you generally grow pretty good uh coca beans too <laughs> and then coconut water boom i think that about covers it <laughs> and this is this is my pad i showed a little clip of it in the uh, previous video but it's pretty comfy. I have like 300 megabit internet, which is freaking fantastic. So it's been good. See ya.